Got a video here about writing geometric sequences and specifically writing the rules for geometric sequences. And so, so here we're just we have this first example. It's the one we'll be working with for most of this video. But here I've got a geometric sequence. And just quick recap: the reason this is geometric is because we're not adding the same number or subtracting the same number to get to the next term in the sequence, but we're multiplying to get to the next term in the sequence. Hopefully, you can see that we're multiplying three every time to find the next term in the sequence. And we could, you know, to find the fifth term, we could multiply by three again. To find the sixth term, we could multiply by three again. But it would be nice if we could write a rule where we could say, hey, what's the 20th term in our sequence? Then we just substitute in a 20, work it out, and get the answer instead of having to multiply by three over and over again until we get to the 20th number over here. So that's going to be the goal today. But before we jump into it, I want you to know two ideas. For one, this is geometric because we're multiplying to get to the next term in the sequence. And then this number that we're multiplying by every time is called the common ratio. And we're going to use R for that. That's the common ratio. In this case, it is a 3 because we're multiplying by 3 every time. It's pretty easy to identify that we're multiplying by 3 every time here. If we have some numbers with maybe some gross decimals, we could always just do um, a term divided by the term before it to get that 3. So I could do 15 divided by 5 to get the 3, or 45 divided by 15 to get the 3. So kind of keep those things in mind as we jump into it. So I've got the same sequence here, and I've kind of got it written in table form where, you know, the, the position in the sequence is in. So the first term is 5, the second term is 15, the third term is 45, um, so on and so forth. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to fill out this table, and I think that by doing that, we're going to see some patterns that are going to help us realize what our rule is, okay? But we know, I can go and fill in this right column of the table, because we know that our first term in the sequence is a 5, so our first term would be a... 5, and then our second term is a 15, 45, 135, and it looks like I included one additional term on this slide. It's um, 405. And so we're going to skip this first term for now, and you'll see why in a minute. So let's just kind of look at this second term and how we got it. So it looks like we got our second term. We got this 15 because what we did is we took 5, and we multiplied it by that common ratio of 3. So our process would just take 5 and multiply it by that common ratio of 3. We multiply by 3 one time. So to find the second term in the sequence, we multiplied by 3 one time. Okay, I can remember that. Um, and, and our simplify for this step will just be, you know, 5 times 3. Um, and we'll elaborate there later. Then for this third term in the sequence, the 45, it, we took the term before it, which this is the 5 times 3 is the term before it, and we multiplied it by an additional 3. So whatever the previous number was, we got this one by taking that same number and multiplying it by another 3. And then for the fourth term, which is 135, we found that by taking the previous term, which is 5 times 3 times 3, and multiplying it by an additional 3. Okay? And then you can kind of see the pattern. Each time to get to each term in the sequence, we're just multiplying by 3 one additional time, which I think kind of makes sense, okay? So for this fifth term, we're multiplying by 3 four times. Now, if we're going to simplify, here's, I think, where we're going to see our patterns. Like, so for example, this uh, in the second term, we did 5 times 3 just, just a single time. And then here we did 5 times 3 twice. We did 5 times 3 squared because 3 times 3 is 3 squared. And then... That means this next one would be 5 times 3 to the 3rd if we were to collapse it a little bit. And this would be 5 times 3 to the 4th, okay? Um, once again, I realize we've still left this blank. I, I guess I can go ahead and throw a 5 here, but I'll, I'll put something else there here in a minute. Um, but look at our pattern that we have here, okay? And what we need to notice is the relationship between the position and the sequence and this simplified form of it, because that's going to give us some clues as to how to do it. So, so they all have the 5 in them. Okay, so, so we can do this. So we can, um, I'm going to leave this part blank. But over here, they all start with a 5. So this is going to be our general rule right here. They all start with a 5, and they're all multiplying, okay, by 3 a certain number of times. But the question is, how many times they multiply by 3? And what we notice is that to find the second term in the sequence, we multiply by 3 one time. To find the third term in the sequence, we multiply by 3 two times. To find the fourth term, we're multiplying three times. And to find the fifth term, we're multiplying four times. 
So to find the nth term, we're not going to multiply by 3 n times. We're going to multiply by 3 n minus 1 times, okay? And that's going to give us our function value at that point. So if we know what position, if, let's say I'm looking for the 10th term in the sequence, I can use this rule and multiply by 3, not 10 times, but 10 minus 1, which is 9 times, okay? And so th this rule makes sense. So let's kind of back it up to this first step now and fill it in, because I think this is going to make a little bit more sense. That would claim, that would mean that to write the first term in the sequence, we're not really multiplying by 3. We're just starting with that 5, okay? But what that would look like here is 5 times 3, and we're looking for the first term, right? So if we're looking for the first term, 1 minus 1 is 0. That's 5 times 3 to the 0th, and if, if we know about our exponent properties, anything to the 0th power is a 1. So this is really just 5 times 1. So you can see that our rule that we wrote even works for this first term in the sequence, okay? And so... We've done all this work. I wanted you to understand and have a conceptual understanding for how we came up with this, but let's generalize a little bit. What I see is this, and I think I've got this on the next slide. I've got everything just summarized right here, okay? Um, what we have is the first number in our sequence right here. That's just the first term in the sequence. See how the first term in our sequence was a 5? So our little rule, our little function is going to start with a 5. I call that f of 1 for the first term in the sequence, but it's just the first number in the sequence. And that we're multiplying that by whatever our common ratio is. We already said the common ratio is that number that you're multiplying by every time. And the exponent's always going to be an n minus 1 for these geometric sequences. Okay? So, so this is, is really your money thing. This is what we're trying to derive and what I hope we kind of came up with with our table. But let's, let's do another example real quick. So we'll do this example right here. And so, so here we've got another um, geometric sequence we can see because we're multiplying by every, every time. And so I'm, I'm going to start by filling in our little table over here. Our first term is 6. Our second term is 12. Our third term is 24. Our fourth term is 48. And we're eventually going to end up at whatever f of n is, that, that nth term, okay? And once again, I'm going to leave the first term blank this time, but let's talk about how we come up with the second term. We got our second term by taking our first term and multiplying it by that common ratio, and that common ratio in this case is 2, okay? So we got it by doing our first term times 2, and that's just 6 times 2 to the first power. And then to get our third term right here, we did it by taking our previous term, so this would be the value of our previous term, and we multiplied it by 2 another time. Simplified that 6 times 2 squared because we're multiplying 2 by itself 2 times. Then for our fourth term in the sequence, which is this 48, we got to think, how do we, how do we calculate this 48? Well, we got that by taking our previous term, 6 times 2 times 2, which is our previous term, and then multiplying it 2 one additional time. That's 6 times 2 to the third power, which gives us that 48. Now, if we were to generalize, we're multiplying by 6 some, you know, number of times, but to find the nth term, we're taking that first term and multiplying by 2, not n times. So like for here, we didn't multiply by 2 4 times, we multiplied it by 3 times. So we're going to put a little n minus 1 there, and that's going to be our rule for this one. f of n equals 6 times 2 to the n minus 1 power. That's our rule to predict values. If I wanted to find the 100th term in this sequence, I could substitute a 100 in for n. 100 minus 1 is 99. And our, and our answer would be whatever 6 times 2 to the 99th power is, which would be huge. It would probably make your calculator explode. But once again, let, let's, let's learn the rule. I don't want us to have to draw the table every time. And in fact, we're about to do some examples where we don't have to draw the table. But I want us to, um, to be able to jump from the sequence to the rule. So let's see. We identify our first term. It goes here. And we multiply that by our common ratio, which we, we already established as a 2. So first term times common ratio to the n minus 1 power, okay? Now, next examples, we're skipping the table. We're going to jump straight from the sequence to here. Here we go. So I would suggest you pause the video, okay? Try these on your own, see what you get, and then play and see if what you got is the same as me. But here we've got our sequence. I'm jumping into number one. Our rule, we've already established, is going to be f of n 
I guess we call it a of n in this table, but we'll stick with f, the f of n notation, equals our first term times our common ratio to the n minus 1 power. Our common ratio is a 3 because we're multiplying by 3 every time here. So our function is f of n equals our first term times our common ratio to the n minus 1. Let's jump to number 2. Oh, I'm already throwing you a curveball. Here we go. So f of n equals our first term times our common ratio. And we're saying, okay, um, our common ratio, it's, you might maybe struggle with fractions or something like this. You're having a hard time seeing what I multiply 10 by to get 5. Um, but what you can always do is you can divide a term by the previous term to find that common ratio. If we come out here to the side, 5 over 10 is just 1 half. That's going to be our common ratio. You could pick the next two terms, 2.5 over 5. If you divide that, it is 1 half. That's our common ratio. That's what we're multiplying by. And then we tack an n minus 1 onto it. That's our rule for this sequence. Now let's do the last one. Oh, I'll throw you another curveball. I'm ruthless in this video. Um, but we're going to start with our first term, which in this case is a 6. And now, let, let's see. Okay, I see that we're going from 6 to negative 3. We're going from positive to negative to positive to negative. Hmm, that seems a little bit odd. But what we got to think about is this. That just means that our common ratio is a negative. Whatever it is, however we get from 6 to 3, and, and hopefully you're thinking, oh, that's a, that's a 1 half, okay? Um, but it's changing signs every time, so that's going to be a negative, okay? And just to unpack that a little more, our little strategy that we did right here where we divided a term by the previous term to find our common ratio, that still works with these, um, with these negatives. For example, if I wanted to find my common ratio, I could divide negative 3 by 6, and that's going to give me that negative 1 half that we wanted. I could pick two other terms. I could divide negative 0.75 divided by 1.5, and that would give me that common ratio that we want of negative 1 half. So no matter how you slice it, we're going to end up with that negative common ratio right there. But hopefully um, in, at this portion of the video you can look and identify how from a geometric sequence we can write a rule for that function and the end.